Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this how to play course space video, we'll be looking at line of sight, cover, and range. In the previous two videos, we covered the crew dashboards, and we also looked at the hostile tracker and the dice. But now it's time to move on and start looking at the other key concepts of the game, which are line of sight, cover, and range. Let's start with line of sight. There are various rules in core space that require miniatures to see each other, such as firing a range weapon. This is called line of sight, or LOS for short. For a character to draw line of sight, you must be able to trace a straight line from the centre of their base to any part of the target character. You can use the range ruler to trace this line to ensure that it's straight. If you cannot draw a line to any part of the target without being completely obstructed by another character, a wall, or a piece of terrain at least as tall as the target, line of sight cannot be drawn. Note that all characters are considered to be the same height for line of sight purposes unless they are classified as massive and the entire area above their base blocks lines of sight regardless of their pose. If you can only draw a line to a part of the target or the line is obstructed by a piece of terrain shorter than the target, such as a crate, then check the cover rules that we'll cover next in the video to see if line of sight can be drawn. The exception to this rule is that characters can ignore pieces of terrain shorter than themselves if they are in base contact. So a model in contact with a crate can fire over it without penalty. The same applies to other members of their crew in base contact. It is assumed that they will get their comrade to duck. In this example, our crew member is confronted by three members of the Purge. Now he can see two, but one is completely obstructed by the wall, as you can see here in this next picture. The crew member's line of sight to the Purge on the left is clear, as he can see the complete miniature through that open doorway. The Purge behind that wall is completely obstructed by the wall, and so that purge is completely blocked. And then finally, we've got the purge on the right is partially blocked as it can be seen through the window. And so the cover rules will apply, which we'll go over in a little while. In this second example, you can see that the crew member's line of sight to the purge in the center is completely clear as there's no obstructions in front of him. This one, however, is obscured by the terrain hiding behind that crate there, so the cover rules will apply for this situation. And then finally, we've got another member of the purge that's hiding behind this piece of terrain, and again, that cover rule is going to apply to this situation too. Now let's talk about cover. Often, terrain and walls will partially block line of sight, but enough of the target may be visible for a shot to be taken. In this case, the target is in cover. The amount of cover may have an impact on the attack or action being made, and those impacts are as follows. If 25% of the target or less is obstructed, this is insufficient cover. Line of sight can be drawn as normal and no further rules will apply. If between 25% and 90% of the target is obstructed, such as them hiding behind a crate or bulkhead, then this is partial cover. Line of sight can be drawn, but additional rules may apply. For example, ranged assault, where partial cover will reduce hits by one. If 90% or more of a target is obstructed, they are in full cover line of sight cannot be drawn at all. Note that prone characters will be affected by cover based on their prone position, so a waist-high crate may provide full cover to a prone character. If you cannot decide what type of cover a target is in, roll the chance die. On a 1 to 3, it's the larger amount of cover, 
and on the 4 to 6, it's the smaller amount. Now let's look at range. For most weapons, line of sight isn't enough. They will also be limited by range. Depending on the distance to the target, the weapon may be more or less powerful or be unable to hit at all. This is measured using the range ruler from the edge of the shooting character's base to the edge of the target's base. Short range is up to 5 inches. Medium range is from 5 to 13 inches and long range is 13 inches or more anywhere further than the length of the ruler. You'll see that the range is shown on the weapon tokens. So let's take a look at those weapon tokens now and also look at the equipment, icons and statistics. Throughout Core Space, you will see various numbers and icons on trader boards, equipment tokens, or in this rulebook. We'll go through a quick guide now just to explain what they mean, but there's a full list of all the game's icons on page 101 of the rulebook. Let's look at base ability icons. Some traders and other characters will have starting abilities that give them bonuses in the game. These are the most common ones. With this icon, if this character's making a move action, this character can move an additional number of inches equal to the number inside this icon. They are still limited to the 11 inch maximum. If a character has this icon, whenever making a close assault action, this player rolls dice equal to the number inside this icon when unarmed. If they have a weapon, they will use its dice instead. You'll see those two icons on some of the crews included in the core set, but there are also a few other of the common base ability icons, which you can find on page 16 of the core rulebook. We've also got statistics for the NPCs, and unlike traders, NPCs do not make complex actions or use items, so their statistics are much simpler. There are four values that you will see across all NPC boards, whether it's the purge or the lowly civilians. These boards should be kept to the side of the playing area in view of all players. And let's just quickly run through those statistics now. This is the number of actions that an NPC can take each turn. Note that NPCs do not always use their actions when they activate. This is the number of dice that an NPC will roll for a close assault action. This is the number of dice that an NPC will roll for a ranged assault action. All NPCs can shoot at up to medium range except the Purge who can shoot at any range. This icon is the physical armour value of the NPC and will modify any hits made against them. And finally, this value is used when traders attempt to persuade the NPC to do something. This is covered in more detail later on as we go through the rule series, but just note that while some NPCs can carry items, they cannot use them. They will only use the statistics that we've just gone through. Now we'll look at equipment tokens. Equipment is one of the most important features of Core Space represented by the small squares and rectangular tokens in the game. Each of these is a weapon or more specialised item that can be carried by traders as well as other characters. You'll notice that the tokens come in a variety of colours. This denotes their type. Blue are weapons and these will be held in your item tray and used to make assault actions. Yellow, these are armour these can also be held in the item tray, but its rules will only apply when in the armour slot. Orange, these are special items, and this covers any other equipment used during the game, from ammo mags to medistims to sensor goggles. Purple, these are your non-combat equipment, such as money or ship parts. And these items are not used during the game, but they will be very useful for trading and maintaining your ship when the mission is finished, so you'll need to allow space for them in your item tray. Then you've got green, these are the objectives, and these tokens are only used 
where specified in missions to represent a vital asset that the crews are trying to retrieve. Usually, a trader will have to carry this off the board to win. On the back of each equipment token, you will see the cost of the item, and this is used when trading in a campaign. The final statistic to look at are the weapon statistics. Like characters, weapons and armor also have statistics. Many items will have more specialized icons as well. These will each be covered in appropriate sections of the rules as we go through the whole series, but they can also be found in the reference section on page 101 of the rulebook. Let's look at some examples of the weapons and armor statistics now. Let's start with the range weapons, and here you can see that there's three circles. The circle on the left is for short range, the circle in the middle is medium range, and the circle on the right is long range. The number inside those circles tells us the number of combat dice used by the weapon. So for each range of this weapon, it's going to have a different number of dice to be used. If there are no numbers shown in any of those circles, then that weapon cannot be used at that range. Next, we've got the close assault weapons. And here you can see the number of combat dice used by the weapon in a close assault action. And the two fists tell us that it's either a standard or a heavy hit respectively. So the fist on the left is standard. The fist on the right or in the middle of these three icons would be the heavy hit. And then finally, on the right hand side where you can see the number two, that icon tells us that the number of combat dice used when throwing the weapon. And if there is no number shown within that icon, then the weapon cannot be used in that way. Next, we've got armor. And starting from the top, the first symbol represents the physical. And a physical armor value will reduce the number of hits against the wearer by the value shown. Beneath that, we've got the round icon, which is the shield. And a shield armor value will reduce the number of hits by the value shown. But if the value is beaten, the shield is inactive for the rest of the mission. Then at the bottom, we've got a fist, and this represents combat, and a combat value means that this armor allows the wearer to make close assault actions with it when unarmed. When using a weapon, they will use the weapons dice as normal. The final weapon statistic to look at is for blast weapons. And this larger number in both of these icons here represent the number of combat dice or effect used on the target of the attack. The smaller numbers show the number of combat dice used on characters within one inch and two inches. So the number at the top tells us the number of combat dice used on characters within one inch, and the number at the bottom tells us the number of combat dice used on characters within two inches. That brings us to an end of all the key concepts. So come and join me for the next video where we can get started setting up the game. Everything we go through in this how to play core space video series is taken from the core space rulebook and you can buy this separately or find it as part of the core space starter set. And if you haven't got this set already, then I can highly recommend it. And I've done a video where I've unboxed all the contents and gone through it in loads of detail so you can see exactly what's included and a little bit about the game. So if you'd like to check that out, I'll put links in the description below to Battle Systems website where you can get all their products, but also Element Games where you can save up to 20%. And you can also watch videos on how to build the terrain and all the different components that come with it. And then I've done another video where we go through all the tokens and cards in lots of detail too. I've also done videos where you can learn how to paint both Ariana and all the other miniatures that come in that core set. So check out those videos if you're interested in painting your miniatures and I can highly recommend doing that. I hope you enjoyed this video and it'd be great to see you in the next video of the series. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. If you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon page. And thanks to everyone who's joined so far. It's really awesome. We hang out on Discord, talk about the hobby, share ideas and help each other out. And you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So I'll put a link in the description. And it'll be great to see you there.